Hi, I'm Carly McAvoy. I wanted to talk more about direct, inverse, and joint variation, some more advanced equations that you might need to solve some of these equations or some of these problems. Direct variation equation is y equals kx, and inverse is y equals k over x, where k is the constant of variation, sometimes known as the constant of proportionality, and then x is the independent variable, meaning which it's the thing that's going up and down that causes y to change, which makes y the dependent variable. So when we are looking at more complicated formulas that we might need, like y varies directly as the square of x. So instead of just kx, if it's the square of x, then we need to say kx squared. So it's the same basic formula, but we change what's happening to x. Um, varies directly as the square root of x would be k square root times x. It doesn't have to be square root, it could be cubic root. I'm just throwing a few examples up. y varies inversely as the cubic root of x looks like k over cubic root of x because inverse means we have k over x. And sometimes instead of inverse, inversely you'll see indirectly. So either one of those we're talking about um, the one thing going up causes the other thing to go down or vice versa. And so here we're talking about y varies indirectly as x cubed. So we have k over x cubed. So here's an example of using one of those. y varies inversely with the square root of x. Find y when x is 16 if y, if y equals 12 when x equals 9. So first of all, decide on the formula that you'll need. Inversely with the square root of x. Here's our basic inverse and the square root of x instead of just x. So you can always try these before I uncover them and see if you do that correctly. But it should be y equals k over x. Next, you're going to write your equation of variation. And that just means you're going to plug in those numbers that you were given. So we're looking for y when x equals 16. So that's not what we're plugging in. We're plugging in these two. We know y when x is 9. So we're going to come to this equation and say y is 12 when x is 9. And then you have to solve for k because now you have everything except the k there. And so to solve for k, you're going to take the square root of 9 and get 3 and then multiply both sides by 3. That's going to give you 36. Now you know that constant of proportionality or variation, which is 36, k equals 36. Now you're going to go back to your original equation, the one you had chosen in step one. You're going to plug in k, which is 36, and the other given value, which is 16. We're trying to find out what is y when x is 16. So I'll plug into that and get k is 36 and x is 16, not 9. And then we're going to solve that for y. And we get 36 over 16, square root of 16, which is 36 over 4, and y equals 9. Sorry about that mistake right there. So we're going to go through those steps every time you have an equation, whether it's direct or inverse. You're going to always find the formula, fill in those numbers to find the constant, and then you find your final number. All right, secondly, that we're next thing we're going to look at is joint variation. That is when one thing is varying based on two other variables. This would be read as z varies directly with x and y. We assume direct variation when we're looking at joint variation a lot of times. So in this case, x and y are the independent variables because those are the things that are going up and down making z change. So z is our dependent variable. It's the one over there by itself on the left. So some more complicated things we could say with joint variation. Jo uh, z varies inversely with the square of x and directly with y. So what does that mean? Well, whenever we have inverse variation, we should be thinking about something that's underneath the fraction. And the direct variation, it should be right beside that k. So if you think about inversely with the square of x and directly with y, then we have ky because it's directly with y and then divided by the square of x or x squared. So it gets tricky. And this one says uh, z varies directly with x and indirectly with the square root of y. Again, indirectly could be used instead of inversely. So I try to throw that in there. I don't know which one your instructor will be using. If it varies directly with x, we should see that x up there with the k. And then indirectly with the square root of y is going to put that square root of y in the denominator. All right, so then this one says, suppose z varies directly with the square root of x and y cubed.
<clears throat> so directly with bon I could have just said jointly here we would have assumed that direct so we would get the square root of x and y cubed but it's nothing in the denominator because there was no inverse or indirect variation let's look at one quick example using joint variation suppose z varies directly with x and inversely with the square of y z is 9 when x is 3 and y is 4 what is z when x is 7 and y is 7? Round your answer to three decimal places. Decide on the formula you will need. We're talking about z equals directly with x, so that's going to be kx, and inversely with the square of y, which puts that y in the denominator. So it looks like that. Now write out your equation of variation, that is plug in all the numbers that you were given up here that you know. Uh, that is z is 9, that's going to go here, x is 3, y is 4. So if I plug all that in, I get 9 equals 3k over 4 squared. And all those numbers are given except for k. So you can come down and solve k, that proportion, that constant of proportionality. And you get 9 over 3 um, time, equals 3k over 16. 4 squared is 16. Take 16 times 9, that gives you 144. Divide both sides by 3 here, and that gives you 48. So our constant of variation is 48. Now we're going to plug that 48 in plus anything else we were given to solve. And so we were given that x and y are both 7. So we're going to plug x and y in to be 7 over here, and our k is 48. So it should look like this, 7 times 48 over 7 squared. And then solve that to find what z is. We have 7 times 48 over 49. And then 336 divided by 49 gives us 6.857 to three decimal places. All right, have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you next time.